Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to Two Minutes to Review. It's Matt. And it's Zach. This is our album review show. If you have not joined us for one of these before, longest album review in under two minutes wins. We do new albums and old albums. You clicked on the picture. This one, a brand new artist to me. This is the new one from Seal and Arter. That's right. I mean, if you're probably already familiar if you're into some of the more heavier extreme music. Not me. Um, not you, but basically this is the brainchild of, and I'm going to mispronounce his last name, so I'm sorry, Manuel, but Manuel Ganu, he's a Swiss American musician who he was, you know, just on 4chan, like, you know, we 4chan, like we all are just scrolling through all the racist, terrible comments. And one particular comment was referring to what if someone fused black metal with with a terrible slur music, and that inspired him to be like, you know what, hmm, I wonder what it would sound like if black metal mixed with African-American spiritual gospel music. So it kind of started off as a joke, but he recorded an album, and holy cow, it was actually really awesome. And he's pretty much perfected the sound with each album. He's gained a larger following. He pretty much records all the music except for the drums on his own, Manuel. and became so popular that he actually formed a band. He's been touring with them. They actually, um, Zeal and Otter actually opened up for Mastodon and Opeth during the 2021 fall tour. So they've been really getting a huge following for their blends of different genres that in any other world would make no sense. I mean, Delta Blues and Black Metal typically don't go hand in hand together. And yet here we are with his self-titled album and, you know, he's released a few singles and of each single, it's already getting a lot of buzz. So I was like, you know what, Matt? I'm sure you haven't heard of Zeal and Otter. I keep hearing amazing things from them. And every time I listen to them, I go, wow, how have I just discovered it this time when I have had a lot of friends who've been buzzing about them too. So I made Matt listen to this album. <laughs> yeah, you and, did. Yeah. And I'm really curious to hear what you think of it. But first, before we get into our reviews, a special shout out to Lucky 13 Beard Co. Yeah, if you haven't joined us in a while or you're joining us for the first time, we have partnered with Lucky 13 Beard Co. to put out a beard balm, an oil that really smells like, like, I don't know how to say it. It just smells amazing. It's supposed to smell like Lemmy from Motorhead. Now, before you think, well, how can Lemmy from Motorhead smell good? Well, it was inspired by Lemmy and all the things that Lemmy encompassed, including bourbon, cola, tobacco, and leather. So there you go. I mean, those are all the things that Lemmy was all about. It smells amazing. And I'm not just saying that because it's ours, but because it's true. It's probably one of the best smelling beard oils that I've ever had the pleasure of smelling. And I've been using beer bombs and oils for years. I actually work in an industry that does beer bombs and oils like we work with those companies and I've been around a lot. So for me to say something smells probably the best that it's ever smelt, it's saying a lot. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Ed because you've been talking about him a lot on some past podcasts, go to lucky 13 the number beardco.com. See what he's got on his website. Tons of great smells, beer bombs and oils. If you don't want the Lemmy, there's a ton of other ones. And we're even giving you a chance to get 10% off by using the code EFP10 at checkout. So throw some stuff in your cart, put the code EFP10 in at checkout. You're going to get yourself 10% off. You're going to smell great, feel great. That's what it's all about. Lucky 13, the number beardco.com. And use that code EFP10. All right, Matt. It's going to surprise you, but. You want me to go first? Uh, you know what? Normally I would say yes, but I think I'm going to go first. Uh, fine. Yeah, sorry. Count you ready? Down. Yes. Three, two, one, a go. So I think it says a lot when even after Zealand Auto released five singles uh, in advance of the album, I keep discovering songs on this album that make me go, holy crap. That should be a single. I mean, case in point, holy poop, <laughs> death to the holy. First time I heard that, like, oh, my God, that's a banger. That should be a single. And they already released a million singles of it. And I think it also speaks volumes that really my only complaint about songs like Bo is that it actually isn't longer, that it cuts to the chorus a little too soon. I wish I could hear it one more time. Admittedly, there's some weird bits like the 8-bit electronic-inspired songs like Emerson that I feel are, are a tad too out of place. Uh, when you have an album that's rootsy feeling and you know more bluesy feeling influence like that. But then songs like Run, Feed the Machine, 
Erase, Church Burns, and just so many others really capture a whole new level of cinematic heaviness. I think that's the best way to describe it. And then you have songs like I Caught You and JMB that find a way to display so many different genres of music all within one single song. Uh, and God in Denver is probably going to be my new wrestling anthem in my own imaginary wrestling world head. Uh, in short, this whole album, I feel like, is proof that Zeal and Otter is more than just a flash in a pan, fun concept for one album. It really shows that this combination of sounds can last on its own merits and proves that Zeal and Otter might be onto something really, really special. And we got a time. Star rating out of five. Out of five, I'm giving it a four and a half. Um, okay. Honestly, I mean, I think I'm trying to be cautious because I could just be punch drunk glove right now with this album, but we could have a potential album of the year contender here. I mean, it's early, but there's something about this album that really just feels and sounds special to me. Um, I really, really dug it. So Matt, All right, fair enough. Are you ready? I guess I'm ready. As ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> that doesn't sound confident. Well, I have to try to read my handwriting, and my handwriting's terrible. That's your fault. <laughs> Why don't you type it out like every other human being nowadays? I had a notebook in front of me, and I just started writing. <laughs> That's your mistake for even bringing a notebook involved. Anyway, three, two, one, go. So if you're not familiar with Zeal and Order like I was, my take on the band is really that it blends together the ideas of darker bands like Poison the Well and the Deftones, infusing them with more accessible elements, maybe from a band like Highly Suspect. And then they do a little bit of sprinkling there with like uh, Mr. Bungle and Between the Buried and Me with some gent blended in there too and soulful vocals. How the hell does this work? I don't know. One of the highlights for me of this entire album was a track called Golden Liar. If you would have told me that this song came out a couple of years earlier, th this would have been probably the lead song for the video game Red Dead Redemption 2. Anybody who's familiar with that game, they know um, they know a bunch of the songs in there with the soulful vocals. And especially in the ending sequence of the game, the, the D'Angelo song that they used on there, I believe it's called um, Unchained. I could be wrong on that. But um, that song right there, this reminded me so much of that. And it took me way back to that game. And it was really just a powerful moment for me because that was such a powerful game, in my opinion. However, moving on, if you are not into video games like I am, I mean, there are still plenty of other really good moments on this album. Like Hold Your Head Low really kind of reminds me of like a, a highly suspect track. Like it's got that vocal feel that 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 band has. And really, like there's just so many different sounds that they managed to capture in here that I was kind of surprised, like Zach said before, that it actually works. Like, I caught you. It sounds like, and I know I hate to go back to video game references, but it sounds like it could have been a part of one of the Doom, the recent Doom games soundtrack because it's so uh, like heavy electronic feeling, but it works. And then on a track like Death to the Holy, the death growls and the mix of the soulful vocals, it shouldn't work but it works in a really weird way. And the only thing that I don't like about this album is the cover because it reminds me of something that Run the Jewels might have done. But this is a solid album from a band that I've never heard of before. Time's locked in. Out of five stars, what would you give it? I'm going to say four. Okay. It For really... a band that you never heard of before, that's high praise. Yeah, like... When I first heard Golden Liar, and I re and I want to get the name of this track right because I feel like this illustrates my per my uh, my argument perfectly. And I think he, uh, Manuel would actually agree with you because he even noted that that is one of his favorite songs off of this album. Yeah, this song, it's called Unshaken, not Unchained, Unshaken by D'Angelo, and it was used in one of the most powerful points of the game Red Dead Redemption 2. It's kind of at the end of the game where uh, the main character, Arthur Morgan, his life is kind of falling apart. You know, I'm not going to give any spoilers, even though the game has been out for a couple of years, but his life is essentially falling apart in his, there's turmoil in his group. And there is just something about the horse ride that he takes listening to this track from uh, D'Angelo that really is one of the most powerful moments in video games, in my opinion, over the last 
five or 10 years. It's so well done and so well orchestrated that the moment I heard Golden Liar and the the lyrics to the song really meshed with that perfectly and the Western feel that he gives with it. I know you mentioned that like the the African vocals that kind of, you know, are mixed in with the album and some tracks I'll give that to you on, but this one really had that, that old Western feel to it. And it gave this track just a, a feel and a message that I haven't felt on a track in a while. Like last year we talked about Mastodon and how you felt like that was something special from start to finish on Hushed and Grim, but on this one, the album is very well produced, but I don't feel like the whole album is special start to finish. This track is like just that beacon, you know, that if you're going to go and say, listen to this album, even though it's not a great representation of the entire album, because there is like no death metal on this track at all, that this is probably the track I would recommend to listen to, to at least get you into what you're going to be experiencing to some degree on this album. I'm glad that you mentioned about Red Dead Redemption because at certain points I was also feeling like the whole album, even though Golden Liar is definitely more of a country western vibe to it, the whole album could almost be a perfect soundtrack to a Quentin Tarantino western. Like I actually was listening to it and thinking, man, Django Unchained could have been so much better if this was a soundtrack. Or even there was a, a more recent film, The Harder They Fall, that I'm like thinking like, man, this whole album, like songs like a race, Oh, that could be like the perfect soundtrack to a, a old Western gun shootout scene in a Western film. Like, and when that goes back to my point, it just it feels so cinematic. Like at moments, I feel like I was listening to OPEF level black metal, and then almost like Gary Clark Jr. at Delta Blues kind of vibe to it. It really just mm-hmm. two worlds that should not blend so beautifully together. I think he just Manuel just nails it. Yeah. And one of the other things that I managed to pick up on here, and I don't know if you have necessarily picked up on this, but I feel like with a lot of these newer bands that are coming out, I'm going to say quote unquote bands, because you mentioned that he plays a lot of the instruments on here himself, except for the drums. I feel like a lot of these newer bands that are coming out really are kind of honing in on it's not about the guitar anymore. It's about what else can I do? I think gone are the days of guitar heroes like Steve Vai and Eddie Van Halen because it takes so much technicality to get to that level or even to be like uh, – even though he's not the most technical but like Slash, to even get to those levels of like guitar heroes, you don't see too much of that anymore with uh, with the the newer bands and the newer – musicians that are coming up. It's more about the feel and the rhythmic vibe that you get throughout the the songs, whether it be from the drums or the guitar or the bass, but just the feeling of the albums really is rooted in, in rhythm. It's not rooted in uh, being, you know, uh, like a flashy shred master anymore. Yeah, absolutely agree. So as much as we like to think our opinions matter, we know what really matters in this game. It's the times. You mean that I won again? Well, you sure about that, buddy? Yep. What's my time? You came in at one minute and 30 seconds. Uh, Well, you know, normally I'd say, yeah, I guess I lost. But guess what, Matt? Someone won on a technicality. Uh, Because I went over. Because you went over. More specifically, you went over by 14 seconds. That's right. You came in at two minutes and 14 seconds, which means... That Zachary Abbott Shaw has won this episode. Ha ha. So it's the first time in months that you've matter. won? No, it doesn't matter. Technicality. Technicality. But do you agree with our thoughts on Zion Otter's self-titled album? Do you disagree? Do you think we're missing the point completely? Let us know on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Epic Footnote. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more podcasts like this as well. Check out some cool videos that we produce over the past few months. And once again, thank you to our sponsor, Lucky 13 Beard Co. Again, go to lucky13beardco.com. Use the code EFP10 to get 10% off of your order, including our very own Lemmy inspired beard oil. Also, thank you to Rootless Coffee, based out of Michigan, producing some really tasty blends of coffee. If you go to rootlesscoffee.com and use the code EPIC ROAST, you can get 15% off of your order. Delicious coffee, great beard oils. What more can you ask for? Thanks so much for listening, and we hope you join us for another episode real soon. See ya. See ya.